Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining um, the Jenkins Online Meetup. Today's topic is Google Summer of Code, the Mentor Roundup Edition. My name is Alyssa Tong, and I'm the Jenkins Events Officer. Along with me on this webinar are, are three other Google Summer of Code org admins, Chris Stern, Bruno Barakton, and Jean-Marc Mason. So some housekeeping items before we begin. This session is being recorded. We'll share the link to the recording after today's session. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat window throughout the session. Our org admins um, and or mentors will respond to them accordingly. We also have an active GSOC Gitter and Discourse channels for further communication. So feel free to join the conversation and post questions there after this webinar. And lastly, the code of conduct is in effect here as well as throughout the community. Um, simply, it means just to be nice and kind to people. So today's agenda will cover the impact of a GSOC mentor, the busy time period of a mentor and a high level task list for mentors. We'll go over project selection criteria, some communication guidelines, and lastly, take more questions, if any. So in 2024, um, which will be in a couple of weeks, will be Jenkins' eighth year in Google Summer of Code. That's if we get accepted. Uh, we will be one of the 150 open source organizations under this program to help bring new developers into the open source software development community. So there are three major components to a successful GSOC program. Those are mentors, project ideas, and GSOC contributors. This program can't function without one or the other. So in this, cup, uh, in this webinar, we will focus on the important but often hard to find mentor component for this program. So from here, I will let uh, Bruno take over a couple of next, next couple of slides for more details. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so we'll see uh, rapidly what it means to be a mentor, at least uh, to me, but I will try to follow the bullet points. Uh, first of all, first and foremost, it is a great human experience. Um, you're maybe there to um, grow up uh, in your technical skills, but uh, you will grow up also uh, with your soft skills because during the Google Summer of Code 2024, you will help uh, new contributors, uh, mentees uh, grow. Um, you will help them become better technically, but you will also help them grow uh, with their uh, soft skills, communication skills, uh, writing documentation, and so on. So you will um, change through this process as well as the contributor, the mentee will change too. And it's a unique opportunity to share your passion for uh, open source, technical subjects, uh, everything about Jenkins that you already know. You can do that through the um, uh, Jenkins forum, for example, on Gitter, uh, on the various Jenkins channels. But frankly, being a mentor for Jenkins and Google Summer of Code 2024, it's something different. It's a um, tighter way of communicating. And frankly, if there is a project that does interest you in the list of the subject proposal for next year, go ahead and try it. Frankly, if you want one of these subjects to progress next year, Google Summer of Code is the way to go. And if you've been in the industry for quite a few years now, it will maybe um, give you some uh, remembrance of things past. We will be able to believe when you started yourself. Maybe you had good mentors when you started in IT. Maybe not, but you could be um, a help, a real help for newcomers in the open source world or the Jenkins ecosystem or the IT in general. By being a good mentor, you can help young people to become better and interested in com contributing to open source, for example. It's also a good time to think about 
your practice? Where are you in your career? Why do you want to share? Why do you want to take some time to teach, to mentor? You have something that you want to share. You want to reflect on your past experience. That's also a great opportunity to um, step back, um, to gain perspective and to transmit, to transfer your knowledge to somebody ready to go into the IT industry. And I said um, as an introduction that you will also be transformed because it will improve your skills as a mentor or a coach. Maybe you already had some interns uh, where you are living in the industry you work for. Um, but frankly, having um, somebody from a different culture, from another part of the world, in a different time zone, uh, practicing a different language, that will teach you a lot of soft skills that you maybe don't use on a daily basis for your day work, for, for example. So frankly, you will become better at communicating. And as you don't want to look like a fool when working on one of these subjects, of course, you will do your homework and you will um, uh, try to... Um, put some light on the shaded areas on the subject of the subject that you are interested in. So that if ever the mentee, the contributor has some question, you may be able to answer or to give some hints. You're not supposed to be the know it all, the master, the greatest of all time regarding the subject, but you have to know a minimum set of things about the subject you want to address. So you will also become maybe better at the subject uh, on the subject you will address next slide please and you may ask yourself okay i will help someone grow but what is a reward the first reward i see i already talked about that is that you will grow also you will become better at communicating you will become maybe better uh, on a few of your technical skills and frankly seeing somebody uh, grow becoming better uh, technically, uh, ameliorating his or her um, um, documentation skills, for example, uh, writing skills, uh, that's a good thing to see, that's very rewarding. Um, and see also a project you believe in, progress, and even succeed, why not? At the end of GSOCs, that's also something that is very rewarding. Uh, it's not the time to uh, testify about what I have done this year, but frankly, seeing the end of the project and seeing it put into production, that's something that's very rewarding. But beware, you just can't sign up for being to be a mentor and then forget about it. You will have to invest some time. So it's between two to six hours a week minimum, I would say. It could be much more than that, but I don't want to um, scare you. Uh, it really depends on the project. It depends on the mentee. It depends on the time you want to spend on the project. But frankly, um, don't think spending less than two to six hours a week or the project might fail. And of course, the heavy lifting will happen during the summer. So there are We'll, we'll see the different phases in a few slides, but um, the main part of the project is the coding phase, and it's during the summer uh, northern hemisphere time, of course. So you will maybe spend more time during the summer than before uh, during the um, uh, spring, of course. Um, and you will maybe have to adapt to uh, the mentor, uh, to the mentee, sorry, um, time zone or the mentee uh, school agenda or something like that. We used to have only students um, in the previous years, but now Google allows people who already have a job to apply to be a Google Summer of Code contributor. So maybe uh, the contributor will work during the day or maybe we'll go to school, do back to school during the summer because he's in another hemisphere where the summer break is not that big. So yes, you will spend two to six hours minimum a week and maybe not during the best time of the day for you. You have to know that before applying and you will have to discuss with the contributor in order to know that beforehand. Um, there is also maybe a problem with time zones uh, because maybe you will be in a different time zone as the contributor. 
And so you will have to set up a meeting, a weekly meeting or something like that. Um, synchronously, you have to be face to face or camera to camera at least once a week in order to uh, exchange because sometimes when the communication skills aren't that good, it's not perfect to just exchange messages. You have to see face to face from time to time. Now, uh, for the requirements, uh, of course, we want you to know a little bit about Jenkins plugins and so on. We don't want you to be a Jenkins master. You don't need to have uh, to be already a plugin maintainer and so on. But it's good if you already know how Jenkins work and how the technologies um, we use are used uh, within Jenkins. So there is a bare minimum to know, but you don't need to be an expert at all. I think the most important part is the motivation and not your development skills. But of course, you have to know how to develop. And it will change from project to project. Some projects are more linked to the Jenkins core. Some projects are more linked to a Jenkins plugin. Some projects are more linked to documentation. And of course, you won't need the same set of skills depending on the project. And of course, you need to know how uh, the open source uh, ecosystem works, or even better, how Jenkins works with open source. Jenkins is open source and it has its own way of working. And we have um, dedicated channels to discuss. For example, we have some way of introducing a pull request. So you will have to gain knowledge if you don't know it yet on how Jenkins works when it comes to open source. And when I say open source, it's not only code. It could be related to documentation, for example, or website design, whatever. But you have to know how Jenkins works with GitHub, how we should submit um, contributions, and so on. But don't worry, there are quite a few guides that could help you if ever it was needed. And of course, one thing that is really important is the subject of the project idea. We have, I don't know, 10 or something project proposals for the time being. I think we'll get three to four accepted by Google. And you have to be passionate about the project ID. Even if you're not an expert on this very subject, you have to know some things about uh, this project and you have to be some kind of passionate about it. You want it to succeed, even if you're not a mentor. That's something you would like to see uh, succeed for the Jenkins ecosystem. And that's a major point. You have to be thrilled by this subject. And of course, we want you to be part of the Jenkins community before applying as a mentor. Being a contributor in the Jenkins ecosystem or community is not that difficult. Um, if you already know Jenkins, maybe you could help uh, newcomers in the various Gitter channels or on community.jenkins.io or even in the developer's mailing list, for example, or the user mailing list. There are tons of ways to contribute. And you could also become a contributor by um, writing blog posts, um, modifying existing documentation, uh, creating pull requests, trying to help with um, issues. Uh, there are tons of ways. And there are also some pages on Jenkins.io that explain it all. So it's kind of easy to become a Jenkins contributor in a way or another. But that's something we want to see you in. We want you to be part of the Jenkins community before applying as a mentor. That's something really important for, you, for us. But once again, don't run away. Um, we still have time. If you haven't worked with the Jenkins community yet, you still have some time to build your muscles, I would say, Jean-Marc. And you can build that experience. We still have time to do that. Next slide, please. So um, we are the org admin teams. So we have Lisa, we have Chris, Jean-Marc, and myself, Bruno. So you can join us on the specific Gitter channel. You can also get in touch on community.jenkins.io. It's a discourse. And you can also, but I hope you won't have to, uh, use the email, the group um, to escalate if ever you had some communication issues. Next slide, please. So we'll now do a round table, at least uh, with the admins and uh, Mark with there. And we'll say who we are, where we are located and the time zone.
important is the time zone. Uh, the project you are interested to mentor, the experience you have with Jenkins and development, and what motivated you to want to become a GSOC mentor. Um, also, we also have Hervé. Okay, fine. Uh, Alisa, are we supposed to uh, do a round table with only the people in the with, panel or with the attendees? With the mentors the, on the panels right now. Okay, uh, so I will start. Sorry. Uh, then I will uh, leave the floor to Chris and the others. So I am Bruno Verachten. I'm the one who talked too much. I'm based in France, the very northern part of France, just next to the Belgian border. And my time zone is UTC plus one, at least until next summer when the government will mess up with the clocks. Um, I'm interested in a few projects uh, to mentor, but I can't mentor them all. Of course, there is the um, Android, uh, building Android apps with Jenkins, if ever it was selected. Uh, Chris created the building iOS apps with Jenkins. I could help with that. I also saw something by Mark, which is the plugin installation manager tools improvement. And there is also the screenshot automation for Jenkins Doc. So quite too many projects I'd like to be a commenter uh, with. And my experience with Jenkins, well, I started using Jenkins in 2013 or 14. So that was a long time ago. But then the company I used to work for um, switched to GitLab. So I forgot about Jenkins until two years ago when I restarted working with Jenkins. So... Um, this year, I was a mentor for a GSOC project about uh, quick start tutorials with Docker. And I had a great time with Jean-Marc and Ashutosh to build something that could help uh, newcomers to Jenkins. You know, with just one command, you could then start a Jenkins instance on your machine and start interacting with Jenkins to learn about Jenkins. And um, last year, no, not last year, this year, I uh, was motivated to become a GSOC mentor because uh, I had quite a few projects I proposed and all of them, I thought they were important for the Jenkins uh, community. The quick start tutorials, for example, will dramatically change the way newcomers start with Jenkins. And that's something I wanted to happen, be it with me or without me, I thought this was really important. And that was a great opportunity for me to help this project to succeed. So that's why I was a GSOC mentor. And this year I'm also interested because now I know what it is to be a GSOC mentor. And I grew up, frankly, so I want it to happen again. I can become better through uh, the next summer, thanks to GSOC. I'm done with that. Uh, Chris, are you the next one? Okay, so my name is Chris. I'm based out in, uh, of Hong Kong. So time zone wise is GMT plus eight, uh, which means that we are like um, a day and night difference um, from my American colleagues. Most of them at least, uh, the ones in the Eastern time, time zones. And um, the projects I'm interested to mentor this year would be, uh, there are a few of them, but um, the, the project I most want to uh, mentor would be the Stats UI project. And my experience with uh, Jenkins in general is like, I have been um, volunteering with Jenkins for a few years, doing Orchid Min for GSOG, uh, mentor for GSOG. And also I have been, um, a plugin maintainer. I think I have four plugins under my belt. It's like, and um, I have been project um, release leads for other few occasions. I participate in dogs always hours. And uh, what motivated me to want to become a GSOC mentor is because like, I used to be a GSOC contributor a long time ago in 2019, 2020. So I did it twice with um, Sunpai, which is well, they do uh, solar physics, so it's a bit so astrophysics, so it's a bit different. And uh, the next person on the list is um, let's try John Mark. If you want to go next, yes, okay, yes, okay. Do you hear me correctly? Yep. Okay, here we go. So my name is Jean Marc Mason. I'm located in Brussels, Belgium, uh, which is uh, uh, just a couple of. Uh, just 100 kilometers away from uh, where Bruno is. So if I shout loudly enough, he hears me. 
Um, I've been dealing with uh, Jenkins a long, long time at different uh, roles. Um, and um, the last two years, the last two editions, I was lead um, org admin uh, for Google Summer of Code. This year, I will only be uh, an advisor to the team and to mentor the team because uh, in 2024, I'm going to retire and move over to France to enjoy my retirement. Uh, and uh, so I will have a lot of personal GSOC projects to do from painting and preparing a new house and, and moving 600 kilometers. Uh, this said, I wanted to uh, share a couple of ideas and in, in points for mentors and indirectly to uh, mentees. Uh, being a mentor uh, is, as Bruno said, a great human uh, adventure. And uh, uh, there is a lot to be learned, a lot of rewards from that. But on the other side, it's also a demanding uh, task. It's an important uh, task because the mentees will be counting on you. They need uh, you. So where I'm pointing uh, to is that it's an involvement. Uh, mentorship teams and, and the team is important, is composed on a lead mentor who is generally the most senior, has the most gray hairs or no hairs at all, uh, and knows the technical subject. Uh, but there's also helps, uh, help, uh, people that will help um, that wants to learn technically and want also learn the mentorship and these human soft uh, skills. And this is very important too, uh, because this is the way you can pro progress professionally, and this is the way open source uh, can help. But this requires an engagement. This requires um, presence. Uh, it requires several uh, uh, skills, and it, it's not easy. Uh, in the sense, the biggest problem that young mentors have, or young in the sense, unexperienced mentors, is the imposter syndrome. Meaning, who am I as an amateur who doesn't know and who doesn't dare speak to these people that, well, no, lead mentors besides not having hairs or being having gray hairs. In several fields, they don't know a lot. I don't know anything about CSS and in, in, in things. It's a team. And everybody comes with the skills, being language skills, human skills, communication skills. It's then important that you participate, uh, that you you engage uh, yourself, that you discuss, and don't stay behind. Yeah, well, okay, I'm I'm mentor, I'm mentor. I'm going to sit at the back of the classroom and not make any more uh, any noise. So, it's it's. A great opportunity to learn and grow, but it also requires, um, uh, uh, an, well, as I said several times, an engagement, an investment uh, uh, of, uh, of, of you personally. Don't forget that summer uh, in many parts of the world uh, are, well, I won't say chaotic, but are sometimes disrupted because of holidays, things like university exams. And uh, so time management for mentors, but also for mentees, uh, is an important task and is something that you need to keep in, in mind. So don't forget that GSOC, it's not... Um, a, a, a stroll in the woods, and and we're going to see. No, it's 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 sports. It's it's a heavy investment, and everybody has to uh, has to work heavily. So the there the involvement uh, uh, is strong. 
the last thing I was I wanted to give, and then then uh, Alyssa is going to to uh, or Bruno is going to turn off my mic wisely because I'm talking to I'm trying to beat Bruno uh, at that. Uh, is what is important for mentors and mentee. And um, I observe that this is sometimes difficult uh, uh, to get, and it's related to the imposter syndrome. Uh, in open source, what is, re what is important is that you come with ideas, that you, you bring the things forward. You're not executing what people tell you to do and this is a this is a, a, a great dimension to open source and this is why it's it's an incredible uh, school is but the creativity the, the the drive the the uh uh all these these sets is important uh I fear that very often, and I observe very often, especially with with young participants, uh, is well, I wait to be told what I need to do now. Tell me what to do, and this comes very often in the question. This is not what we expect. This is not what Google Summer of Code expects. Uh, um, we expect. People that create and create are autonomous, that can communicate, that can share and work, uh, uh, that can work together. And, and um, well, I, I, otherwise I'm going to go uh, over the board there. Um, if you want to have uh, uh, advice or, or general advice, or, or want to discuss these matter, don't hesitate to ping me or other org admins uh, on the Getter channel or on community.jenkins.org uh, to see. And, uh, and, and we can discuss it. Uh, I, I will not uh, uh, discuss because this comes so often. Say, where do I start? What do I need to do? Well, do your homework. Uh, read, be autonomous, and share, discuss, get ideas. So this is a very different dynamic than school. This is why it's it's uh, so great. And the last bit of advice is read about imposter syndrome and about beating it. Uh, everybody can do that if he has the stamina to, to do it and, and just just go for it, try it, and, and not everybody will be selected, and you will be selected another time, but it's it's a great adventure. I, I hope to have enough time to uh, participate uh, to this uh, uh, this year's edition. Uh, I hope to be able to continue if my wife allows me, and, and my vegetable garden will, will allow me to. Uh, to, con to continue uh, spend uh, time with you, but uh, it's a great, great human. Okay, Alyssa, I, I or Bruno, um, I think I said a little bit too much. So, whoever wants to take the mic, go ahead. So, perhaps we can hear from Mark as sure. his mentorship experience. Sure, I'm Mark Waite. So I maintain the Jenkins Git plugin and a number of other plugins that are interesting to me. Uh, the, the, I'm based in the U.S. Rocky Mountains, so in the Rocky Mountain region of the United States. So uh, just as, as Bruno noted and as Chris noted, we're on separate parts of the world, all of us, right? I'm about 12 hours away from India, for instance, and uh, 11 and a half hours or 12 and a half hours, depending on on how my government is messing with clocks uh, great to great to be involved happy to be in, happy to be involved and thrilled to be part of it so interesting projects to me there's a, a git plugin project proposal to use bearer tokens it's a different authentication method and there are folks who've been interested in that i'm also interested in open telemetry a way of monitoring jobs 
and surfacing or bringing the results of that monitoring to users in different forms. For instance, through a, a network monitoring page or through performance monitoring systems like Dynatrace or like uh, Grafana. Those, those kinds of things are interesting to me. I'm also listed as a possible mentor for plugin installation manager tool improvements and happy to assist there as well. Uh, past experiences have been really positive. The, the, well, I should share one. I just recently submitted the third recommendation from me for one of my former Google Summer of Code mentees to the advanced degree programs he, the, this candidate is applying to at universities. And as it turns out, universities care very much about this kind of thing. Your involvement in a, in a Jenkins or in an open source project can help people as they move their careers forward educationally, and it helps the Jenkins project move forward. So it's, it's a delightful experience. Yes, please don't kid yourself, it is at least two to six hours a week, all summer long. That's, that is, that is the reality of it. If you say, oh, but I just can't do that. Okay. Then it's probably best not to be a mentor. We really do need the time given to these new contributors to support their efforts as they contribute. And it, there's nothing dishonorable about saying, I'm sorry, I just can't do it. The, the org admin team will typically assign two or three mentors to any given project as a safety measure, but you should not go into it relying on the safety measure. measure. You should instead be committed yourself to give that two to six hours a week to support the contributor in their work. They are by nature inexperienced. They are by nature first-time contributors or relatively new contributors, expecting them to have years of professional development experience is unreasonable. That's not what they're going to come with. They're going to come inexperienced and ready to ready to learn. Um, that's all that I really had, unless Alyssa, you or John Mark, you had other questions you wanted me to address. No, I think we're good. I think we can move on to the next slide. Thank you, Mark. And Chris, this is for you. Okay, so next we'll talk about the GSOC 2024 timeline for mentors. So as you can see in the diagram shown on the screen, we have eight milestones from org acceptance in February to the final evaluations supposedly in uh, September. I'm saying supposedly because like uh, this time around, like we have G uh, Google have three different lines for the GSOC projects. So uh, they call it small, medium, and large. And it depends on the size of the project. So the length can change too. So um, next. So GSOC 2024 timeline for mentors. So uh, just reiterating, uh, organizations are to be accepted by Google sometime in February 2024. And candidates can start preparing for the proposals from February 22nd to March 18. Um, during this time, uh, candidates may need help to understand the project idea. So we will have to stand by, especially um, watch the GSOC SIG channel to uh, answer any questions they may have. We have to uh, review and guide proposal drafting. So uh, these would um, normally be done using Google Docs, but sometimes depend depending on the project, it could be done via other means to like Figma or maybe a uh, Google Slides. Um, we over communicate in the open. So this means that no private or one-to-one -one communication channels allowed. So even if like people approach you uh, for private advice, you should direct them to the public channels instead. And we have weekly office hours. Uh, usually it should be, um, if I'm wrong, please correct me. I think it's like we, we did have that on our first day last year, but this time I'm not sure. It's like, it should be the same time slot, but uh, we'll have to confirm. So uh, we will we'll answer questions of com uh, contributors and to give guidance. 
the proposal rankings are computed for uh for the candidates to um to submit the applications it's between march 18th and april 2nd and all mentors will be involved in the reviewing and ranking of the candidates next slide please oh hang on can we go back one slide because i i think we have a mismatch yes so um for gsoc 24 timeline for mental is part two we also have the bonding period which um which usually marks the beginning of the gsoc project which has been accepted this is the period during which um the mentor or mentors and mentees uh, learned about each other for project and uh we uh will set up the tech stack for its specific workflow into project communication during this stage as well so this is a very crucial period to um to establish report with the mentees and um during this stage we prepare and publish a project plan and the issue of schedule and uh, we also discuss with the community um usually via email sometimes via discourse um about project plans and uh, details and finally the coding period is norm normally between may 27th and september uh, 2nd but we have to confirm that too so uh for this coding period um we have um midterm demos and presentations uh, that that should come around July, August, I think, and end of term final demos and presentations. So two demos and presentations for each project per cohort. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Next. Oh, hang on, yeah. So project ideas, uh, we have, um, should we introduce the projects here? Not really. So we have the project ideas page here for 2024. I think for this year we have, at least 14 project ideas so far and um we may add more later as they come and uh, next slide please and project selection criteria a good project rests on three legs a strong proposal by the student so um it should demonstrate they have understood and faced the project idea well and they should use novel and structured ideas for the project and propose concrete outcomes that's um, measurable and they should be able to show the technical skills and guts required for um, at least the basic ones required to start the project and we also have to show to google we have a strong mental team uh, we uh, as an unspoken goal uh, would like to have for each project three mentors uh with one journey is okay they should be experienced or relatively experienced so um for more into a c period slide and they should be knowledgeable on the project's subject matter or at least one of the mentors should have um, expert knowledge in the project subject matter and uh, the third leg is we have to have a very strong project so first which means that it should be technically feasible Second, it should be technically challenging enough to motivate uh, why we, we have a project. And third, it should be a useful to the Jenkins community to justify why it's been selected and sponsored by Google. So next slide. So project selection process, once submitted, formal proposals are reviewed by all mentors, even though they may not be the mentor for that particular project, all of the mentors on our team will grade each project. The grading comments used to sort proposal. So this it's involves some time commitment on the mentor's part. And uh, we only choose one winning project per project idea. And the project proposals are ranked by each of us, ideally. But um all of the projects um for all the project proposals for each project per for for like the mentors assigned to the um to the, to the project must grade those projects and ranking was always discussed during meetings with all mentors we then fine tune and um 
and 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 we find the um, criteria. Mentoring team for projects proposed and assembled. So it's like once the projects are selected by Google, we are uh, we will confirm the mentors for the mentoring team by the Orchimene. And we will also confirm the availab availability of the mentoring team to make sure like um, each project is covered um, as best as we could. And also Orchimene team makes finalization. So we request Google for a number of GSOC project slots. So this is like, this is one information we provide to Google when we submit the application. Um, and uh, when we choose the project ideas to uh, to submit, we do not know like how many project slots we will be given. But um, when you take the projects, project student mentors, I believe we are able to bring to a successful end. So um, it really depends on a lot of factors of whether the project will be selected. Um, but normally, like if a mentor originally is interested in a set of projects, but they're not selected, they may get reassigned to another project. Next slide. Um, communication. Communication guidelines. So all communication explanations are to be public. This is hard for like, this is not, for lack of a bad word, word normal for uh, for most people, cause like uh, for open source, it can be kind of awkward to have all the communications out in the public. And this is understandably hard for shy and imposter syndrome participants. Uh, but we should avoid one-to-one -one private communication during public phases. And the general thumb is praise is to be given in public and critique is to be shared in private. And uh, that's the end of my part. Thanks, Next Chris. Um, if there's any questions, feel free to put it into the chat window and... Um, we can help answer the questions. And also be posted in the Q&A. Yeah. We'll give it a couple minutes. So if there's no questions, um, definitely you can reach out to us after this webinar via the Gitter channel, as well as um, communications.jenkins.io. Um, we're always there. Mark has a question, I think, in the chat. Oh, sorry, Mark. Well, so I, I open it to, to Chris, to John, Mark, and to Bruno. Are there other things that potential mentors should consider? We've talked about we've talked about time commitment. We've talked about skill level. We've talked about some of the dangers associated with imposter syndrome saying, oh, I'm not good enough. Are there other things that are on your mind about, hey, a mentor should consider this as as they embark on the journey of being a mentor? Uh yeah, actually I want to add like maybe to repeat ourselves just to um for about time commitment it really depends on whether you're the lead mentor or like um and it really depends on the mentee and the project nature and how you intend to mentor it like for some projects it can be a few hours per mentor per week but uh, for others it can be more demanding you may need to uh some sometimes to work through code yourself too so that may take a bit more time like, i'd say like it could take me 10 hours per week per project, like it happened before. So do consider like time wise, if you have the time to do so, or if, if it's like, um, if you really cannot do it, can you work as a team with the other mentors to make it happen? And I see John Mark has his hand raised, Alyssa. Yeah, it, uh, one of the other points I wanted to draw the attention has already been raised is it is interesting 
but sometimes difficult. Be aware that time zone or time differences uh, is something we need to learn and be able to deal with. Uh, it's a difficulty, but it's an extraordinary opportunity to learn to work with that. So to leverage asynchronous communication, have a very good written uh, and quality, uh, quality uh, written communication. So these are different uh, skills. So I don't want to scare people of that. I just want to make them aware that this is an interesting thing to learn and requires exercise. I like the words, you need to build muscle and, and so you need to, to master this skill. Uh, so just be prepared to keep the effort. So time zone difference can be challenging. Um, it's early in the morning for people, late in the evening for others. And when you're busy working, you're stuck. How do you manage that? Interesting questions, interesting techniques to learn and put in place. But you need to be aware of that. Uh, one thing I would uh, insist on, maybe it's something you told us about, John Mark, earlier, is um, contributors are not following a well written path. They are writing their own path, they are making their own journey. So it can be difficult for them to um, make proposals, to progress on their own, to experiment with no novel ideas, because they are used to have an assignment and do it the way it is asked for. And that's not the way GSOC works. So that's difficult for the mentees, but it's also difficult for the mentors, because you have to let the mentees uh, a degree of freedom but you have to guide them nonetheless. So it's sometimes difficult to find the right amount of push, pull, uh, step back and so on. So that's something that could take a few weeks. It took me a few weeks or even a month uh, <laughs> this year to find the right amount of push and step back because yes, it's not an assignment. Contributors make proposals and they follow their own path. It's different from school, different from work. It's something else it's open source so we have a question from van d if i'm a potential mentor in a project can i answer questions if i have the knowledge about the subject matter of the contributors who are interested in that project i see that chris um, is typing the um oh the answer uh van d you mean before the cutting phase in the bonding session or even before during the proposal I don't think yeah, so let's assume that just throughout the entire period, if he's interested in being a mentor. Yeah. Um, maybe more, more, more so now, because like, there are a lot of questions in the chat now as well on Gita. So maybe like uh, for... Okay, so interesting communication. Uh, yeah. method, method. Answers yes, you should answer as much as you can, yeah. and uh, it's because like it's going to by nature the, the effort, so you should help as much as you can and find um ways to contribute if you can. Yeah, but keeping in mind that the contributors have to the potential contributors have to do their homework too. So you're not uh you know you're not machine answering as soon as somebody puts a coin in it. Um, you, you should help the contributors, the potential contributors, when they have questions maybe about the process or general questions about the subject, the idea, but not give the answer for each and every question because everybody has to do his own work. I have a good image uh, uh, for that. It's Now it talks to parents. When you teach a child to uh, use a bicycle, you need to find the exact balance in holding the bike that the kid doesn't fall, but also let it loose so that the kid learns to do it himself. And you're just there to avoid that he falls on the ground. And, and this is a, a balance that you need to, to find in a way. This is uh, mentorship. 
Now, coming back to uh, Vendit's uh, uh, question, I, I think uh, it's good to give advice and guide, but the word guide there is very important. Uh, a lot of people, young people, are used because of the ed educational system to be fed. So, and and the professor is is telling, do this, do that, do that. We want to get out of that model. And so, how you advise, how you guide the people needs to be very, uh, very fine. And I agree with Chris. Yes, get involved. Answer coach, whoever, mentor or not. You need to, to remember the way you felt the first time you joined a community. So uh, 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 this is very important. But find the correct balance. Don't give all the the, the, uh, the answer. Mark raised his hand. So, yeah. so I, I think I'm, I may have a different different angle than John Mark and Bruno so it's okay that mentors disagree with each other don't be shocked that, that in this case I don't remember the last time I felt like there were too many answers to any request from any potential contributor on any of the forums I've watched I would love to have the problem of too many answers to a, a, a potential contributors questions so if you if you have some knowledge about the subject and are willing to answer, please answer. That's great. Because if we make the fatal, the flawed mistake of deciding that, oh no, only lead mentors should answer, or only very qualified mentors should answer, we will get far fewer answers than we need to have for these potential contributors. We've got a, an enormous pool of potential contributors. This is a very interesting program to these contributors. And therefore, we're going to get a flood of questions. And if we lean on too heavily on only the lead mentor or only the lead mentor and a few others, we miss the chance to engage, to connect, to help these people along. I don't mind if we if we get more answers. I'd love to have that problem. That's, that's mine. So uh, you've heard my disagreement. John Mark? I, I fully agree with your disagreement, Mark. So, and, and the point is very, very valid. The, the, the thing... Uh, Bruno and I had in mind, and I think it's shared with Chris, uh, we get regularly questions, uh, which are, I'm excited to start with GSOC and with the Jenkins community. Where do I start? Well, these questions are uh, um, have been answered so many times, just to scroll up in the thread. It has be already uh, uh, been there. So, yeah, okay. You can you can help uh, the people uh, uh, where to find, but we're expecting that people at least start to reel in the knowledge and know where, where to, to, to search. Where definitely help is required, and, and there I strongly support uh, Mark's opinion, is once we get in the real stuff, not the where do I start, read the documentation, try it, but oh, I tried and I don't understand this. I thought it did that, but I, I don't understand. These are the gold questions. These are the good questions. I get this mistake on uh, uh, when compiling, and this is the error message. This is what I tried, but now I'm stuck. Can you give me an idea? Another gold question. This is these are these are motivating questions. So I think we're we're in sync uh, with the the. the Bruno raised his hand. Yeah, just wanted to say about that. When you give an answer, please make it always public so that we don't get somebody who's got an advantage uh, because he got the answer and the other don't know about that. So always public. And that's a good habit to have for the rest of the GSOC project. Very, very true. So that, that, that rule about responding in public 
is not just for the service of the individual it's it's for the whole community right when if i choose to answer you in private i have shared an advantage to you that may not help others the other is i've also most likely assured that i'm going to have to answer the same question again from someone else whereas if i answer it once in public I can at least refer people back to that answer in the public location and say, hey, here, I answered this already. Because guess what? Many of these questions have already been answered by others or have already been asked by others because they're pretty common questions. John Mark? And, and the other side of the, the argument is also creating one-to-one uh, -one communication is counterproductive in building a community people that share knowledge that work together because there you start dividing and you can you start it's a strong word but suspicion what are, are they doing what is what is their idea in their corner there what what are they trying trying to overturn or trying no when you try an idea is the spirit of open source show it make it public and say i'm working on that I don't know if it will work out. I don't know if it's a good idea. This is what I'm doing. This, these are the results. It's it's the open source Darwinism, and it works because it's public. So just the other side, of the the argument about public uh, sharing. I will have to drop shortly. We have just a couple minutes left. Any last minute question before we drop? Okay, it doesn't look like it. So our next uh, GSOC related webinar is gonna be in January, end of January, and that's gonna be dedicated to um, new GSOC contributors. So until then, happy holidays and thanks everybody. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Happy holidays, everybody. Bye.